What if I told you that aging, the relentless march of time that we've always considered inevitable, might actually be a treatable medical condition? This isn't just wishful thinking. It's a perspective rapidly gaining traction in the scientific community. Imagine a future where our generations will be able to expect to live till 90 and play tennis and even make it to 100 and still have a career, a second, third or fourth career, um, second, third or fourth partner if you want. Um, but the, the important point here is that this isn't about living forever. It's about changing the way we treat people in terms of healthcare medicine. So if this potential is on the horizon, it begs the question, Right now, aging is not considered a medical condition. Does anyone have any idea why we don't call aging a medical condition? Just think about it, why don't we? Historically, the reasoning was quite simple. Aging was not classified as a disease because it affects more than 50% of the population. But many now argue this is an arbitrary distinction. When you delve into the science, you come away realizing that it has been insane to regard aging as something that is separate from a disease or a disorder. And this isn't just a fringe idea anymore. There's been a significant development. Now, the World Health Organization has declared aging for the first time as of this year as a medical condition. It's really quite amazing to see a, a large institution declare aging as a condition. This shift in perspective is monumental because aging isn't just about the passage of time. It's the primary driver for a vast majority of chronic diseases. We're talking 80 to 90% of conditions like heart disease, Alzheimer's, frailty, and diabetes. As we age... You won't just feel older, your body will literally be older. Uh, and we haven't understood why that is. Our understanding of why we age has evolved dramatically, moving far beyond earlier ideas. For example... The old idea that came out of the 1950s from mostly physicists who were previously working on the Manhattan Project, their idea was that we ran out of genetic information, mutations. I'm, I'm sure you've probably all heard of the mutation theory of aging, that we just lose our genetic information. Turns out that's probably wrong because we can make mice that have a lot of mutations and they lose a lot of their genetic information, but they don't age prematurely. And there's a whole body of research now that has made my field essentially throw out the idea that we are aging because of a loss of genetic information. So what is it that causes Aging. A leading scientific explanation now centers on a different kind of information loss. So aging, I put it to you, is simply a loss of information. This is the core of the information theory of aging. But I just told you that it's not due to the loss of genetic information. So what is it? Well, there are two types of information in our bodies that are essential for life. One is genetic and the other is epigenetic. So we have our genetic information, our DNA, the fundamental blueprint. And for the most part, this DNA sequence remains remarkably stable throughout our lives. But then there's the epigenetic information. Think of the epigenome as the conductor of an orchestra. It's a complex system of molecular switches and tags that tell our genes when to turn on or off in specific cells at specific times. This control is absolutely vital for our cells to maintain their identity and function correctly. An analogy I like to use uh, is this uh, compact disc or a DVD here. For the very young in the audience, we used to put music and photos on these things that were very useful for a moment. Um, but anyway, so they obviously they store digital information, which was what was great about them. But what was really sucky about them was that they would get scratched. You had to be very careful with them. Uh, and you can see this is a great analogy for aging because the cells on the right, by this analogy, uh, they still have the information to play the music, to play the concerto that might be encoded in those zeros and ones or those pits in the aluminum foil. But this, the reader of that compact disc cannot read the songs merely because the laser is skipping and being uh, refracted. But what is great about this analogy is it's very simple in this situation to reset the system. You just get a bit of polish. It's possible you could just get a rag with some toothpaste and polish off those scratches. And guess what? It's brand new. You can read the concerto. And if we're right about aging, it will be possible to essentially do the same to our body and allow our tissues and our organs to play the symphony of our youthful lives once again.
This concept of corrupted software really brings home the idea of aging as a modifiable process. The information theory further explains how various factors contribute to the aging process by disrupting this crucial epigenome, leading to other recognized hallmarks of aging. One major culprit is DNA damage, specifically broken chromosomes. When our DNA strands break, our cellular repair crews reorganize the epigenome in a massive way as repair proteins leave their normal regulatory functions to fix the breaks. This ping-pong game can result in these proteins not returning to their original positions, leading to a loss of information. Oxidative stress within the nucleus is also considered part of a damaging positive feedback loop. Our modern lifestyles can also inadvertently speed up this process. Living in abundance mode, characterized by constant eating and a lack of physical exertion, suppresses our body's innate defense mechanisms against aging and causes the epigenetic clock to tick faster. Persistently high levels of insulin and blood sugar, often a consequence of this continuous feeding, prevent the activation of crucial longevity genes known as sirtuins, accelerating the degradation of epigenetic information. Chronic inflammation is another well-established accelerator of aging. Similarly, carrying excess body fat, specifically white adipose tissue, releases inflammatory molecules and signals an abundance of resources, which prevents sirtuins from activating. And it's not just physical stressors. Mental stress through the release of cortisol can be an insidious hormone that accelerates aging. Environmental toxins like heavy metals and certain chemicals also add to the epigenetic burden. Other hallmarks, like the accumulation of cellular junk, the shortening of telomeres, the protective caps on our chromosomes, or mitochondrial dysfunction, our cellular battery packs winding down, are often considered downstream consequences of this more fundamental loss of epigenetic information. For example, telomere shortening causes cells to become senescent, or zombie-like, spewing out inflammatory signals. But here's where the science gets truly exciting. Understanding aging as a loss of epigenetic information is paving the way for strategies to slow down and potentially even reverse this process. The primary goal is to extend our health span, the period of life spent in good health, with an increased lifespan being a welcome side effect. Our bodies actually possess a remarkable defense system, longevity genes, often called the survival circuit. A key family within this circuit are the sirtuins. When a couple of things happen. One is that uh, my lab and others showed that there are longevity genes in the body that come on and protect us from aging and disease. The group of genes that I work on are called sirtuins, there's seven of them. And we showed in 2005 uh, in a science paper that if you have low levels of insulin and another molecule called insulin-like growth factor, those low levels turn on the longevity genes. One of them that's really important is called SIRT1. And, but by having high levels of insulin all day, being fed means your longevity genes are not switched on. This shows how important it is to manage things like insulin if we want to stay healthy as we age. So how can we actually turn on our body's longevity genes? Interestingly, a little bit of stress on the body, the healthy kind, can trigger powerful defenses that help slow down aging. This idea is called hormesis. Food plays a big role. Eating less often, like skipping a meal or following intermittent fasting, for example, eating only during a six-hour window each day, puts your body in a state where it thinks food is scarce. This can help activate special genes called sirtuins that protect the body and slow aging. Eating more plants also helps, especially plants that have been stressed themselves, like wild plants, because they contain natural compounds that activate our defenses. Eating fewer calories overall, known as caloric restriction, is one of the most proven ways to extend lifespan. Avoiding sugar is critical. Too much sugar, like glucose, sucrose, or large amounts of honey, can damage proteins in your body and speed up aging. Whole fruits are fine, but fruit juices can have too much sugar. Exercise is another major tool. When you move, especially running or strength training, your body reacts as if it's facing a challenge and turns on anti-aging systems. Lifting weights also helps keep your bones and muscles strong as you age. Temperature can help too. Going to the sauna regularly has been linked to a lower risk of heart disease, 
Cold exposure, like cryotherapy, and treatments like hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT, can activate anti-aging genes by putting the body under temporary stress. HBOT has even been shown to help lengthen telomeres, which protect your DNA, and make your biological age younger. Supplements and medications are also being studied. NID boosters like NMN and NR help fuel your cell's longevity systems, but NID naturally goes down as we age. Metformin, a diabetes drug, has shown signs of reversing biological age in humans when used with other hormones. Spermidine helps clean out old cell parts, a process called autophagy, and may help keep our gene expression stable. Alpha-lipoic acid, ALA, supports our energy-producing parts of cells, the mitochondria. Too much iron might speed up aging by helping harmful old cells build up, so keeping iron in check may help too. The most exciting area? Reversing aging itself. Scientists are learning how to reset the body's youth settings using genes known as Yamanaka factors, OCT4, SOX2, and CLEF4. These have already reversed aging in mice and monkeys and are being tested for things like blindness and stroke in humans. Some chemicals can also turn old cells young again, a possible path to full body age reversal. How do we know if it's working? We can measure biological age with advanced blood tests, DNA methylation tests, also called epigenetic clocks, AI that reads facial features, or even simple signs like how fast you walk. The good news? You have more control than you might think. While your DNA matters, up to 80% of your health in old age can be shaped by your habits and choices. The science of aging is moving fast, with massive funding and new tech like AI and robotics helping push it forward. What once seemed like science fiction is quickly becoming real science.